All right, so first of all, obviously, I'm not in my office. Uh, I'm more comfortable making my videos down there because I can just pretend like it's just more work. But apparently, a rat has died in my office, and it smells terrible. We've looked for it. I even put a bounty on it for the kids so that I'll give you money if you can find it. And this, it must be in the walls, but it smells terrible, and I'm spending as little time down there as possible. So... Welcome to my living room, my dining room, welcome to my house. Second of all, I'm really excited. I got my logo put on a couple of shirts and I'm really, really excited about that. Um, also, very ironic that I'm a, more out of my comfort zone than normal because I'm never in my comfort zone making these videos, but more so than normal because today I'm actually talking about being uncomfortable. So, one of the things that I like to do is to grab, maybe pop some popcorn, grab a Dr. Pepper, and if the weather's yucky or cold, I don't like to be cold. I'm not comfortable being cold. I like warm weather. I am a summertime person. So if the weather's not good, I might go down to my office and turn on a movie, or if the weather's nice like it is today, I'll uh, go outside in the sunshine. I might... Uh, read a book or listen to some music and crochet, watch the kids play. Those are things that bring me comfort. Things that I like to do, things that make me happy. And we all have things that bring us comfort. And it's good to have things that bring us comfort and to be comfortable. But you know what can happen if you become too comfortable? Um, ruts. Ruts are what happen when you become too comfortable. Think about your favorite easy chair. Once, you set, once you've sat in it enough, it kind of wallers out a U-shaped hole. Not a U-shaped hole, but a U-shaped hole. <laughs> so it, it kind of, it, you sink into it and it's comfy and sometimes it gets kind of hard to get out of. Same thing with our habits and our traditions. Sometimes we get so caught up in them that it, we wear out a rut and that rut gets hard to climb out of. Um, but you know what the thing is, is that a lot of times God calls his children to do things that makes them uncomfortable. Uh, take Moses, for example. So in Exodus chapters three and four, Moses has already fled from Egypt, got married. He's tending the flocks for his father-in-law and living comfortably in the land of Midian. Well, God shows up in this burning bush and tells Moses, he's like, I want you to go back to Egypt and you're gonna be the one that leads my people out of slavery. Uh, Moses is like, I, I can't do this. I, I can't do this. Anybody else? God says, no, you're the man for the job. Moses makes excuse after excuse, begs God, please send anybody but me, anybody else. God says, no, you're the one that's gonna do this. I'll be with you. I'll even send your brother Aaron to help you. Finally convinces Moses that he's able to do it. And Moses goes back to Egypt, ultimately um, leading God's people out of slavery, just like God said that he would. Uh, what about Esther? So Esther is living comfortably with her cousin Mordecai when uh, the king decides that he needs a new wife. After a lengthy selection process, Esther's chosen for the job. She's the new queen. And so then she kind of has to settle into a new comfortable, a new level of um, safety, of comfort, living in the palace there. Until Mordecai finds out about Haman's plan to eradicate the Jews. Mordecai goes to Esther and says, you, you, see, you can take care of this. You're the queen go petition the king for um, on our behalf. And she said, wait a minute. You know that anybody that goes before the king without being called, it's possible that they're subject to, to death. Like, like you, you can die if you go in front of the king without being called. And he hasn't called for me in several weeks now. And Mordecai says, who knows but that you were put into ro your royal position for precisely a time as this. He said, God's put you where you are for a reason. And your comfort is not as important as doing what's right. So, 
after days of prayer and fasting, Esther goes before the king, petitions on the behalf of the Jews, and um, ultimately also delivers her people from harm. What about Job? Even after being put in the very uncomfortable position of losing everything he had, his possessions, his children, his own health, he still served God. Um, Jonah tried to run from God and ended up in the very extremely uncomfortable position of actually being in the belly of a nasty, gross, fishy belly. Um, Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they all refused to bow down to or pray to the king and chose to serve God even though they knew that doing so could make them lose not only their positions, but their lives. Um, or what about Hosea? God commanded Hosea to marry a prostitute to um, represent God's people's um, unfaithfulness and then his redemption of them. What about Mary, the mother of Jesus? She's just a girl minding her own business and God comes to her and says, I want you to be the mother of my son. Think about the things the community would have thought about her having a child supposedly out of wedlock. That had to be uncomfortable, but she gladly did what God asked of her. Um, think about how uncomfortable Peter must have been the first time he saw Jesus after denying him. Man, I'd have hated to be in his sandals. But he went on to transform from an uneducated fisherman to one of the great leaders of the early church. Paul, on the other hand, was in a very uncomfortable position. No, he was comfortable. He was not uncomfortable. He was in a very comfortable position as a, an esteemed student of Gamaliel. When Jesus, as Jeremy likes to put it, bushwhacked him on the road to Damascus <laughs> and said, you got to stop doing this. Um, I need you to, to preach for me now instead of against me. It had to be hard to go back to the places where he'd actively been persecuting the people that he was now one of. But he did, and he lived his life every day to try to please God. Our best yet, let's look at the early Jewish Christians. Think about all of a sudden the things that they thought were wrong were okay. And the things that they had always done now needed doing differently or some of it didn't even matter at all anymore. So they had to completely retrain their minds to do what God desired of them and to think the way that God wanted them to think, even though they should have been doing it all along. But um, I'm sure that period of growth was uncomfortable having to, to retrain the way you thought about things and the way you looked at the world. But they did, they grew, they learned, they shared, and they spread, and here we are. Sometimes God calls us individually and collectively to do things that make us uncomfortable. He wants us to climb out of that rut and climb out of that easy chair and make changes. Turn the world upside down. Free his children who are still in bondage to sin and the law. Paul tells us again and again to embrace the spirit of freedom in Christ, like in Romans 6, 6, and 7, Romans 7, 6, Romans 8, 15, Galatians 4, 4 through 7, Galatians 5, 1, Galatians 5, 13, Ephesians 1, 7, and so many more. He reminds us that we have been freed from sin and the law and that we are to conduct ourselves as children of God, liberated and redeemed by Christ. It won't always be comfortable. It won't always be easy. Just like the early church had to retrain their minds um, and their way of thinking, often we do too as well. Too as well. Um, but if we, like Moses, Esther, Mary, and all those others are willing to put our trust in God and step outside of our comfort zone, he'll do great things with us as well. Just like Ephesians 2.10 says, we are God's masterpiece and he has created us to do the good works that he prepared for us long ago. Live fearless and joyful.